I'm Rose Cushing. Welcome to Carolina Hoofbeats TV. We recently had an opportunity to travel down to Lumberton, North Carolina to the Southeastern Event Center and Agriculture Center there and be part of the Cowboy Up Festival that's sponsored by the North Carolina Horse Council. Today I have as my special guest Sue Gray, Executive Director of the North Carolina Horse Council. Sue, I know you had a lot of events going on at the Cowboy Up Festival. Can you tell us a little bit about the barrel racing that you guys put on? Yes, I can. Boy, we sure enjoy our cowboy up here at the Southeastern Lumberton Center, and we look forward to many, many more uh, type events here. The barrel racing displays the uh, skill and speed of a rider, and you place these barrels in a cloverleaf pattern. And the riders maneuver their horse based on not only not touching the barrel, but how fast they can go around the barrel. So it's thrilling for people to watch. Also thrilling for the rider because we have uh, uh, added jackpot money. So they're riding not just for the thrill and enjoyment, but also for the dollars. And thanks to the Border Belt Horsemen's Association uh, for being one of those sponsors and also for the Golden Corral and the Lumberton Visitors Bureau. Yeah, I think that event had a thousand dollar extra added jackpot. That's certainly worth the trip down to Lumberton to compete for. Absolutely. And those guys were flying. I know you also had ranch sorting event on Saturday night down there. Can you tell us a little about ranch sorting? Well, ranch sorting is one of my favorite events and it's favorite because it shows the true beauty of working with the horse and the rider. You take two riders and you put the cows in a pen and they draw numbers and number the cows and you have to move the two riders have to maneuver those two cows from one pen to the other in the order of the numbers drawn. Uh, so it's fascinating to watch how only not the two riders work together, mm -hmm. but how well the two horses and the two riders work together. So that's always thrilling to watch. It's interesting well. to watch it too because the cows start working together and kind of clump up and make it a little bit more difficult <laughs> for those riders. So they get smart pretty fast. <laughs> yes, they do. Yes, they do. I noticed that there was also a new event this year that the Horse Council was promoting the Extreme Trail Horse Challenge. Uh, can you tell me something about that? Well, this is a brand new event for us, and it's new in that we realize that many of our members and many of our horse owners in North Carolina, and there's 50, over 53,000 households, are trail riders. Mm -hmm. But they not only want to just go out and kind of enjoy the beauty and the scenery of their ride, but they want to challenge themselves. So we've put together a series of obstacles from water obstacles to noodle gates where swim pool noodles are put and the horses have to walk through them. So there are things the horse may not be used to seeing. Right. And then they challenge themselves. Can they maneuver them through there? And they gain points at each obstacle. Uh, we have wonderful sponsors for this as well. We want to give people a reason to want to participate. And we have a beautiful uh, handmade saddle uh, from World Class Saddlery, who is one of our primary sponsors. And we also have Equa Savings, which is another group of people who are working with us to put together a zero turn lawnmower and well at other discounts at many equine related businesses for this event. That's exciting. I know a lot of the riders were telling me that their horse would cross a blue tarp a thousand times at home, but when we laid it in a ditch, it made a little bit of a difference in the way he approached it. So that yes. was fun to watch and fun to participate in. Absolutely. And there's still time, folks, to get in on those points for those great prizes. The information is on the Horse Council website. There's four more challenges, and then the grand finale will be in November. We also had a special needs rodeo for kids with special needs. That looked like they were having a, a great time. Can you tell the viewers about that? Um, we did a special needs rodeo, and as well as a kids rodeo, for this reason. 
courses can be enjoyed by all. And we wanted to be able to have something for our youth, regardless of their skills, regardless of their exposure to horses, that they could enjoy and learn how to do something that was perhaps exciting and thrilling for them. Uh, it was an absolutely wonderful response. And our volunteers took the kids through five different centers from uh, an educational center just learning about the horses to a stick horse barrel race uh, mm -hmm. which uh, many of the kids jumped on the volunteers backs and they carried them through the barrels and that was also kind of fun and thrilling for not just the kids but the volunteers and then they also moved to a roping section where we could rope an actual uh, bull's head for them teach them how to throw a lasso they felt good about learning a skill mm -hmm. but perhaps the last but not least was the actual riding of a horse uh, and this is the one that, you know, they wanted to do over and over and over. Yeah, that had a long line for a while. That I wanted to ride them myself and I own horses, but it, it was hard to tell who was having the most fun, the volunteers or the kids. That's correct. A great event and a great opportunity for the area youth. You know, kids involved in agriculture are 75 percent less likely to be involved in drugs and crime and gang activity. So that's a great way to promote it in the neighborhoods. Absolutely. And then um, Mary Miller Jordan came down and did a demo, I believe, with one of her wild Mustangs. Mary Miller Jordan is an exceptional horse person and she takes these Mustangs 20 some days, 22 days out of the wild and absolutely gets them to do anything she asks of them. But what she did for us was extremely special this time because she spent her time with our special needs kids talking to them about what it meant to be different, mm -hmm. uh, what it meant to be bullied uh, and how sometimes horses and Mustangs, wild horses, feel bullied and how being special was okay, and that being different was okay, and that it took a soft, kind hand. And so I was very well received by not only the kids, but their parents, and Mary just did an exceptional job, not just with the horses, but with the kids as well. That horse was incredible. It came right to the fence and let all the kids pet it. So that was pretty amazing for a wild horse that's actually from the western part of the country, rounded up with the Bureau of Land Management and the Mustang Heritage Foundation. And then Jerry King was there with his demo with his Australian Shepherd cattle dogs. That was incredible. And here again, uh, Jerry is one of our board members, uh, but Jerry brings such unique skills to the profession. Um, and what he does is, is show again the working horse and the chemistry between animal and man, uh, where his dogs literally will follow his hand signs and maneuver the cows from point A to point Z. He can put it in a zigzag pattern. He can have the dog tell him to bring all of them or to just bring one of the cows. Uh, and it's, you know, what, what is, who doesn't want to see the horse uh, and the dog together, two of the most favored animals in the United States. Very true. And Jerry King, I believe, has won the National Cutting Horse Association Paint Horse Worlds three times on his cutting horse. Multiple horses. Amazing champion. trainer. Well, tell us a little bit about the North Carolina Horse Council itself. Well, the North Carolina Horse Council is your voice uh, in Raleigh. We're a, a volunteer nonprofit organization, agricultural commodity group that represents all horse owners. We are your voice and we work on laws, policies, rules and regulations which allow you to enjoy your horse or to utilize your horse in the manner that you would like. Uh, so we really need people to come, come on board uh, keep us informed, tell us what your issues are, and we will make sure that we are there for you in Raleigh working on those laws. And how can people join the Horse Council? It's real easy. Uh, I always tell people uh, joining the Horse Council is, is uh, $12, and it's less than you know lunch for two at McDonald's. So uh, for that, you're going to get your representation and your issues heard over and over. We also offer a uh, limited liability insurance policy for only $25 more, which provides the security and coverage that all horse owners desire and need. Go to the website. It's so easy. You can just print in your information, utilize the payment and find out you know, the payment system and find out uh, all of the information there. And that insurance policy is a tremendous added value for members of the Horse Council. Even if you board your horse at a facility, you really should carry this policy because if he kicks your farrier, you could be sued. So something definitely worth pursuing. Um, the Lumberton Visitors Bureau played a big part in this as well, did they not? The Lumberton Visitors Bureau has been a champion of the Southeastern uh, Lumberton Event Center uh, and has really provided not only their financial resources, but their physical, their individual human resources and their connection to other groups 
to help build this facility for the community. Mm -hmm. And it will be a rising star. We look at the facility to be the mega horse park for North Carolina. Absolutely. The infrastructure is in Lumberton, the location's in Lumberton. It's got a really good chance of being tremendously successful. And, and this show was kind of started as a fundraiser for that, was it not? Yes, this show is, is we hope that the Cowboy Up will continue to be an annual event to help put some of those dollars back into the local community and back into the event center so that other equestrians can come from other states uh, and enjoy uh, the facility here in Lumberton. And I'm, what are, is the Horse Council working on next for its next event? Our next event is, uh, along with our Trail Horse Challenge, of course, is our Southern Horse Festival, which will be this year by returning back to Raleigh to the Hunt Horse Complex. It's November 25th through the 27th, and we look for an exciting event, added some new added programs. As always, we have some surprises mm -hmm. uh, and wonderful awards for our winners. And that'll be the grand finale of the Trail Challenge series, so that we'll get to find out who's the winner of those the handmade saddle, and the, the chinks, the breast collar, the bridle, and the lawnmower. So that's going to be an exciting Sweet. event. I believe that's November 25th through the 27th at the Hunt Horse Complex, correct? Yes, that's correct, and we hope you'll all come and enjoy. If you don't have a horse, just come on out. We'll have one there for you to pet. All right. The North Carolina Horse Council was established in 1972. We are a nonprofit organization that puts every dollar received back into supporting and working for our members. We are a volunteer organization that is supported by people just like you, with passion and energy. Hi, I'm Sue Gray, Executive Director of the North Carolina Horse Council, and I'd like to share with you today a few reasons of why I would like you to join us. We are your voice. We work on rules and regulations that help you use and enjoy your horses each and every day. There's power in numbers. We have over 306,000 horses in North Carolina, making us eighth in the nation. We also have over 53,000 households owning horses with multiple owners within those households. And we are a $2 billion industry adding to the economics of the state of North Carolina power in numbers. We ask you that we can go and help to protect those privileges as we move forward. But we do more than that. We also do grants and we help to preserve land and protect our trails and we support youth groups and other equine associations throughout the state. And here as we sit in Lumberton today, we're working to build the Southeastern Agricultural Event Center into a mega horse park for the state of North Carolina. Come join the herd. We need you. Hi, I'm Rose Cushing, and as publisher of Carolina Hoofbeats Magazine and a breed farm owner myself, I joined the North Carolina Horse Council because I was interested in the laws and rules and regulations that would affect me as a horse owner as well as my business. I've gotten very involved in it, and we've put on all kinds of events to help the equine industry and raise money for different projects. It's been a great experience, so if you haven't joined the North Carolina Horse Council yet, be sure and join the herd soon. Hi, I'm Alan Harper. I serve on the executive board of the North Carolina Horse Council. The Horse Council fights for the right of horse owners in North Carolina. We are currently working on the right to ride, which is very important. It gives horse owners a place to ride our horses in North Carolina on state-owned lands. Um, I have a diverse background in horses. I've served on the North Carolina High School Rodeo Board, served as president two years ago, and I've also served as president of International Shrine Horse Patrol. So, we, being me and my family, are very involved in the horse industry. We've, I've owned horses all my life and believe in what the Horse Council has to offer. It's a minor membership fee of $12 a year, and you'll represent it very well in Raleigh. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Jerry King from Parkton, North Carolina. I train horses out of a facility there. We've been working there for several years. and. Uh, I'm on the board of the North Carolina Horse Council and the reason I did was to try to help promote the horse industry in our state and what this facility here could do for the, for the horse industry and to gather the stalls up. We're trying to raise money here for to build the stalls and promote the stalls. Uh, this is a very good facility here, great location, a bunch of good people around here. So everything we're doing here this weekend is to promote the growth of this facility and for the horse industry, which reaches not just horses, but feed, tack, fuel, motels, 
and every industry that you can think of that's in the county, we help support it in some means or another. Hi, I'm Linda Falls. Um, I'm a farm owner here in Robertson County. Uh, we own quite a few horses, about 11 or 12 of them. And of course, we do some farming also. Uh, I joined the Horse Council several years ago and I'm on their executive board. And I did this because I wanted to be more involved with the horse industry and the landowners and what was going on in our state and with the legislators. And I really enjoy going to Raleigh and to the different places we have to go. Uh, to find out more about what is going on in our state, involved with our farming, with our horses, with our right to ride, uh, our trails, etc. Hello, my name is Rachel Flake and I am Junior Miss Southern Horse Festival. I represent the North Carolina Horse Council. The Horse Council helps the horse industry and financial aids for the horse industry. The pageant includes a personal interview with the judges, a one minute speech, a horsemanship pattern, and they also judge you on appearance. We welcome you to join us and be part of the largest and most active horse council in America. Carolina Hoofbeats is a publication that I began in 2011. It celebrates all of the North Carolina horsemen and women and the expansive industry that we have here. Almost every breed of horse is represented in our state. The North Carolina horse industry is a $2 billion a year industry. In that industry, 90% of those dollars are spent right here in North Carolina with 75% of that money spent in the person's home county. It's a very, very important asset to North Carolina and a huge part of our agricultural industry. Please stay tuned for a quick look at next week's episode of Carolina Hoofbeats TV. This episode of Carolina Hoofbeats TV was made possible in part by funding received from the North Carolina Horse Council a North Carolina nonprofit corporation dedicated to representing and furthering the common interest of the entire equine industry in all 100 counties of North Carolina. Carolina Hoofbeats is brought to you in part by Newcomb Quarter Horses. Newcomb Quarter Horses with over 40 years experience. Find out how we can help you today. NewcombQuarterHorses.net and by World Class Saddlery, custom saddles, repairs, custom tack, and personal leather items. Find out more at worldclasssaddlery.com. And also by Southeast Equine Magazine, a free publication about the horse industry in the southern United States. Catch up on the latest issue at equinemonthly.com. Thank you for watching Carolina Hoofbeats TV. Join us on WHIG TV every Sunday at 7.30 p.m. Or watch us anytime at carolinahoofbeatstv.com. And remember, there's nothing like the sound of Carolina Hoofbeats. Sitting high in the saddle, nothing else You're probably wondering, what is a miniature horse exactly? Well, a miniature horse is just like a full-size horse, but they're 34 inches and under, and that's what qualifies them as a mini. Still a different thing from a pony, even. So we're going to give you a peek into what it's like to own these horses, show them, and breed them. Lee, tell us a little bit about the halter horse classes here today with the minis. Well, we have several classes. We do from Weanlands up to senior mares. We have confirmation classes. They judge them on the confirmation uh, for each category. Each category is judged on, on how well they perform and, and, and halter. They also have the driving classes, but today we're doing halter classes. Okay. And how is a miniature horse for a halter class different than a big horse? Is it sort of the same preparations or what do you do differently? It's all pretty much the same. Uh, it's just a shrunk down version of a big horse. Mm -hmm. um, the confirmation is supposed to, you, you should be able to take a photograph of the horse and not tell that it's a miniature horse. Oh, that's cool. So you're looking more for the Arabian horse type traits with the little head versus the quarter horse bulldog body? Yes, yes. It's judged primarily on, on more of an Arab style. Um, that's changed over the years. Uh, the draft horse style is what it started with and it's mm -hmm. changed over to more of the Arab style. A little more refinement, a um, little dishier head, stuff like that. Right. 
And when you go into the halter classes, do you have like a special training that you do for a halter pony to show him? I, I'm, I'm not real familiar with halters. Oh, sure, sure, absolutely. <laughs> we condition the horses. They're on a five-day work week. They mm -hmm. uh, condition just like the big horses. Uh, we go as far as swimming the horses for exercise. We've done, done several different things. They treadmill, they use uh, hot walkers and all that, mm -hmm. but we exercise them just like a big horse. They sweat their necks just like the big horses. Um, the feed program is that of a big horse. Mm -hmm. They eat the top, top quality type feed and uh, we uh, make sure they're not overfed but not underfed and they're not overworked, not underworked. Okay. So. And how much do the bloodlines come into play with that class? Um, quite a bit. I mean, the years of breeding has gone about 150 years worth of pedigree. And uh, the stronger the pedigree, the easier job we have as a trainer. Mm -hmm. uh, quality is always very important. And when the, when the confirmation is there, a lot of times it comes from great breeding. Okay. And how does the horse qualify to be a mini versus being a pony? It is a height breed. Uh, 34 and under is an AMHA standard. So mm -hmm. any horse that measures under 34 inches is qualified as a miniature. They're inspected and they can be hard shipped. And when they get registered, you know, they're miniature horses at that point. And there's two miniature horse registries? There's AMHA and AMHR. AMHR goes up to 38 inches. Mm -hmm. AMHA is 34 and under. Okay. Well, that's really interesting. And what do people do with minis if they're not showing them? Well, um, they love them, of course. Uh, they're great yard ornaments and mm -hmm. farm. You know, a lot of people write them off for agriculture exempt taxes and right. things like that. Um, but the minis are just loved. They're just like a big horse, just in the shrunk down version. So when they're not showing, people drive them. Um, they just turn them out with their grandkids and let them enjoy them. And mm -hmm. uh, they're just a lot of fun. So they're good for kids. They're good for everybody. <clears throat> that's really good. There's nothing like the sound of Carolina hoofies Riding down the trail under a big blue sky and pine trees Sitting high in the saddle, nothing else matters My feet in the stirrups, I'm so happy Sound.